So we just wanted to let people know that we are waiting for a third member of the board to join us so that uh, we have a quorum. Uh, we have two items on the agenda and uh, I don't think we can hear them without one more. She's coming. Board. Oh, she's coming. I just Good. talked to her. She said she was having a little trouble with the camera, but she's um, on her way. Okay. Great. Perfect. I'm not sure who the guest is. That might be her or it might not. Carolyn, do we have somebody here for the first item on the agenda, 303 King Street? I, um, yes, we do. Okay. okay. I don't see her coming in yet. So. I wonder if we can ask her to call in. Oh, here she comes. Great. Greetings, folks. If you're waiting for me. Hi, Sarah. So I think we're all here now. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we will go ahead and open the uh, meeting of the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals. Notice of this uh, meeting was published on July 28th and August 4th. Uh, I'm David Bloomberg. The other voting members with us are Elizabeth Silver and Sarah Northrup and Carolyn Mish is here on, on behalf of the Office of Planning and Sustainability providing support to the board. Um, we have two items on the agenda. Um, and um, uh, before we get to the first agenda item, we always have an opportunity for public comment. If there are members of the public who have comments for the board that do not relate to either of the two items that are on the agenda for tonight. So Carolyn, can you help me check to see if it looks like there's anyone else? I don't see any hands raised. Okay. See, seeing none, uh, we'll go, uh, we'll start the uh, hearing for the uh, first item on the agenda. It is past 5.30. So the special permit, an application for a special permit by National Sign Corporation for signs at 303 King Street, Northampton, map ID 24B-70. And uh, I'll ask uh, for each item on the agenda that the representative of the applicant or the applicant 
uh, identify yourself by name and address for the record. And that would be true for anyone who addresses the board, please. And uh, give us a, a very brief description of the application that has been submitted since we do have the materials in our electronic files in front of us as well. Um, so I guess we can go ahead and hear from the applicant or the representative for National Sign Corporation for 303 King Street, Northampton. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is, hi, my name is Heather Dudko and I work with National Sign and they're representing Aldi with their new site in Northampton. Um, so the petition before the board tonight is to install a side wall sign at 75 square feet, which exceeds um, the allowable square footage on the side of a building. The allowable is 25. So we're asking for a 50 square foot uh, relief for the sign on the sidewall. Um, I'm told that this is kind of a non-typical uh, prototype building um, that was approved in Northampton. It has a very large front and side facade, and they would like to have the side wall sign match the front wall sign. So they both would be sub 75 square feet and they would look identical. Um, and to have the, the sign on the side will help um, the new customers. It's a very large parking area on the side elevation and it will just um, help with visibility on that large facade to help the, the new customers come into the building. Um, and that's really about what I have. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any any questions from the board, please? Uh, sure, a uh, couple of quick questions. Sure. Um, so I, I think I read in the materials that you talked about it, it being helpful for directional purposes, but there's it's just the name, right? There's nothing Correct. beyond the name on the sign. Okay. Correct. Um, and so the lighting, let's talk about the lighting. Mm -hmm. It's it, You said it was internal? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it will come on and off at business hours only? Um, if there are certain restrictions of the timing, they'll adhere to what, what the restrictions are. I, I sometimes I typically try to look that up ahead of time to see, um, but they'll if it if it there's a um, restriction after business hours, like an hour after or an hour before, they'll they'll adhere to any restrictions on the lighting. Okay. Yeah, I think typically what we've um, suggested for businesses along that area is uh, uh, shut off at close of business. Okay. Or I don't know, a few minutes after, but okay. yeah. <laughs> so do you know what the uh, hours will be for the- I, for I do not know what their operating hours are. Um, okay. I don't know. I could maybe look that up quickly. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, what is the nature of the business? I'm... They're a grocery store. Oh, thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, any other questions from board members? Yes, this is Sarah Northrop. Um, along the same Oops. going on uh, uh, at the city level about lighting standards. Uh, Carolyn, can you tell us, is, is there something pending as far as changes? I'm personally I'm concerned about the long-term creep of additional excess light. And uh, if it's simply on and off at close of opening and closing of business. Okay, what happens when the businesses are open all night? Not that I know this is possible or anything, but um, Carolyn, is there a, any news on that front? Um, so the changes to, um, that are being evaluated are in draft form for lighting, um, mostly address site lighting and building you know, directional lighting as opposed to sign lighting. Um, so I think that that's the biggest um, push has been to look at those. Um, so we don't have any specifics about the changes to the sign lights. Okay, but our regular lighting uh, ordinance does put a cap on uh, lumens at the property line and those sorts of things already. Um, so I would expect those to be adhered to. There also are existing sign lighting standards about um, um, and the amount, the maximum lighting levels depending on the sign background. So those would still be applicable. 
Very good. Do we have any, um, I'm sorry, the, uh, the, uh, I'm not seeing a diagram. Maybe it was, uh, attached separately of the, uh, the site plan and which way the building is pointed, that sort of thing. Was that an attachment that came to us? That was included in the original submission. All right, let me just. Yep. Uh, would that have come to us on? Hmm. Oh, there we go. If you can share that, that's even better. Quicker. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Than me trying to dig through old. And so that page. that would be what's on the screen now is the front wall sign. Front as in facing the King Street, King Street front correct. Edge. And then the second drawing is the proposed on the side. With, and then the third drawing is the tenant panel, which they'll have in the in a freestanding sign. So I just included the front wall sign and the tenant panel just to show you a comprehensive package of what would be there. But the side sign is the, the sign in contention while we're not contention, but <laughs> uh -huh. the sign that we're asking for the subject permit. of this permit is the one um, on the correct that's being circled correct yeah oh okay that yep. one. and then there okay. should be I did I did include like an aerial view that shows the building that one would be facing south correct if if I'm assuming King Street's moving north south so let's just I think I think it's the last page Carolyn you're muted if you were talking <laughs> Yeah, I just, I don't see the site plan. Let me just go if I can find the other one, but it's the building at the very rear behind the Starbucks building. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. Um, I don't see the there's not a site plan in the submittal, but um, for reference, um, I can just put up the Google Earth um, image if you want to see that. So you can see the Starbucks labeled here. So the building sits back here, sort of parallel to the other building um, that is owned by Colvest as well. So mm -hmm. it, it, the facades are, are essentially along the same alignment. So it runs here. And then this new um, building is the Starbucks building runs along here in front. So the sidewall is facing this way and then this way. So if you're coming down King Street, you know, you can mm -hmm. see through the parking lot there. So this uh, sign, the subject of this permit, is facing north or south? I believe it's both. I think they showed both facades. So it's a, except it's a special permit. The way I read, interpreted the application was that they're asking for two sidewall signs, one on each end of the building. No, and, this, just one, just the one side sign. Just the south side and not right. the north side. Correct. Okay. So there'll only be two wall signs total on the building. Okay. And there Thank won't you. be any signs closer to King Street. King not Street. on the side. Not no, on the side. Anywhere. Anywhere. On the front facade that faces King Street, there'll be a sign. Right. But the building is set back from King Street, right? Yes. Somewhat, yes. Yep. So there may be a ground sign further up towards the frontage at the entrance, correct? There's a ground, yes, there's a ground sign with multiple tenants sign, um, signs on it. Mm -hmm. And they've applied already. That's the by right sign, one of the by right signs. All right, well, uh, I guess um, my, my uh, thoughts and discussion would be, I don't particularly have concern about you know, incrementally, one more sign doesn't look like much. Um, but at the same time, I'm aware of our uh, of the incremental increase in lighting and the busyness of the signage and um, and setting a precedent of just you know waving requirements 
regularly, we, we want to take a real look at it. And I agree, especially with the size of this sign. So, um, you know, I agree with everything you said, Sarah, but a lit sign of 75 square feet is different than a lit sign of 25 square feet. So mm -hmm. um, I think we need to be, um, I, I do, I am concerned also about, you know, if they're open 24 hours, what will happen? <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't think they're open 24 hours. I mean, um, I don't know the restrictions um, at the town, put any type of business hour restriction on them. Um, I do know the ones in this area here, they're open till eight or nine at night, but I don't believe they're a 24 hour operation. Is there some way that we can put a limit on this, Carolyn? Um, you know, if it does creep open, you know, hours just creep open longer and longer because if we just say close a business and they end up doing, you know, 24 hour, <laughs> That's that's a big difference. Well, you can certainly put a time limit, you know, say 10 p.m. Signs have to be off at 10 p.m. If they change their hours of operation and they feel like they want the sign on, they can always come back for an amendment to expand those hours of lighting. Now, I'm thinking about the, um, if you have uh, by right certain number of square feet, and a certain number, a certain quantity of brightness, which I'll say is measured in lumens. Mm -hmm. um, if we uh, if we extend the if we, if we allow more square footage, but we don't allow more lumens, perhaps we have mm -hmm. another sign, but together they aren't as glaring bright as say the uh, Academy of Music neon lights, which are awful, <laughs> you know. Like they, maybe they just aren't as bright. We, we have a, a cap on lumens and you can spread it out on the square footage requested. Any thoughts on that? Well, is that sort of a question for the city council in terms of the process of maybe eventually amending the, uh, you know, the ordinance governing uh, you know, dark what dark skies. Well, if the ordinance currently has a cap on the lumens, uh, uh, and we uh, we have some we have some jurisdiction about allowing more square footage, I think it might make sense to just hold hold the limit on the amount of light. And perhaps the uh, square footage is, is under our discretion or being asked. You mean hold it to the amount of light that would be allowable under a 25 square foot? Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah. And, you know, at night, these things are perfectly visible. They're, you know, chronically much brighter than they need to be to the point where they cause glare. That's a, perhaps that's a, Carolyn, you want to weigh in on that on that possibility, that suggestion? Um, yes. Yeah. So currently, um, uh, there is a um, provision in the code that says lighting directed on uh, wall signs shall conform to the output standards for commercial uses, as shown in the table, and for business districts, light on light surface, it's, it's um, graded by sur the sign surface. So light, medium and dark. Um, and so it goes from 15 foot candles to 50 um, for dark surfaces. Um, so I think that um, um, you, I think it's probably you could have the lighting, you could say, you know, it could be, it has to be dimmed by 50% at X hour and then um, turned off at, you know, Y hour if you wanted to do that. Um, I don't, you know, I guess that I'm, I'm wondering if these signs will be on all day until they turn off at night um, because sometimes 
those do that does happen where you don't necessarily need it during the daytime. Mm -hmm. um, so that could also be something you look at. So I don't know if you want to um, ask the applicant mm -hmm. that question too, because then you're reducing the total light energy output across a 24 hour period. Um, so. No, I don't not, really yeah. care about the uh, daytime output and and often folks, um, uh, people paying for the electric bill aren't as concerned because they're all LEDs now and it's so much mm -hmm. cheaper that they don't mind leaving it on in case suddenly it's a dark stormy afternoon or something. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't know the absolute specifics on the sign, but I do know just from my previous work with other clients that signs can be built with internal dimmers and they are you know as the as the it gets darker this you know the signs they adjust to what the lighting is outside so that they don't stay at a constant um brightness um mm -hmm. kind of like our phones i don't like i said i don't know the specifics about these um another option is i think they can make these faces opaque so that only the light would come through the graphics and that might um, eliminate some of the concern. Um, so it wouldn't be a full faced lit sign, mm -hmm. just the light would come through the graphics, mm -hmm. the Aldi and the, and the logo. Um, All right, so I, I understand the, the, the logic of the request of having a, an additional sign on the sidewall of the building because that is the broadest side of the building. Um, and I guess I, I don't feel like I don't have enough information about the sign itself. What do you need, Sarah? Um, well, often, um, uh, Carolyn, could you put that back up? The um, So the drawing yeah. shows what the sign looks like and yeah. presumably the proposed colors. Yeah. And then, um, Okay, so here we have, you know, the aluminum frame and yep. uh, et cetera. Um, and there's some power requirements. Um, just reading through, not... Uh, so, I, so the question is, what we often see on a development is something like a lighting plan that shows the foot candles, you know, say they have a street light and for parking lot coverage, things like that. Uh, is that being evaluated separately like under DPW or something? A larger site plan review probably includes parking lot lighting that we wouldn't. Um, they've at. already gotten their site plan review. Uh -huh. And so the lighting plan that was approved is was only about the sites because they didn't have a tenant at that time. Uh-huh, um, makes sense. And so the, again, the sign standards are um, uh, about lighting would require that as they, when they go to the building department for their final application for the sign, they have to submit the standard showing that they're in compliance with those um, um, output levels. Mm -hmm. And then the building department would check those. And okay. so, yeah. All right, well, I do have a fair amount of confidence in our building department. Um, holding folks to the uh, current regulation that's in force. We're just at a distinct disadvantage when without knowing what the operating hours are going to be. So, you know, we can arbitrarily set a turnoff time, but, you know, we don't want to mm -hmm. create a problem for the store. Right. Um, but we also would, you know, like to know what we're getting ourselves into if we just say at the start of and um, and the and the close of business. Is there any quick way of figuring this out? Um, I just oh. try to do, you know, like a search of other locations. Um, Hmm. I mean, the few that I've pulled up, Worcester, Walpole, um, all close at eight. I see that. And I'm not, I'm, I'm, 
a little familiar with the store. I don't, I can't say that I've actually ever shopped in one, um, but I, I'm 99% sure they are not a 24 hour store, nor do they stay open mm -hmm. 11, 12 o'clock. So they're not like a 7-Eleven or a convenience store or they're more, they're actually like a wholesale grocery. They do like a lot of pallet, um, have a lot of um, um, items on pallets. So you, you buy in bulk, but not like a BJ's. Mm -hmm. kind of in between so um, I'm not like I said I'm, I'm fairly confident that they most of the stores would close eight or nine o'clock but what if the we one, a, yeah. what if we had a condition that um, the light the lighting for the sign will be turned off at, at 9 p.m and then as Carolyn said if, if their hours are going to be later than that uh, they can come back and request an, a mod, an amendment to the okay. permit, and at that time we can dig a little deeper. I would also add that I would feel more sensitive. On the one hand, we are the ones who approved that sign in front of the Academy of Music, so I realize there's sensitivity uh, to uh, not making what some might view as a mistake again. Uh, but it's also true, I believe, that I don't think this building is in sort of a residential neighborhood. I could be wrong in terms of in the back of the site, but, um, and that makes me feel a little better, but what about that as sort of a compromise? I'm asking the board members, uh -huh. um, uh, you know, it has to be turned off by maybe 9 p.m. And if for some reason the applicant is gonna have late longer store hours, they can come back to request a, an mm -hmm. amendment and maybe there'll be an evolution in our, in our dark skies legislation by then and or at least we could dig a little deeper into dimmers that uh, would have to you know be utilized uh, for less brightness after darker hours I, I don't know I'm just throwing that out there yeah. no, that's, that's exactly what I was thinking David um, I guess the only question is you know if there are changes in the in the in the city's requirements lighting requirements, that then would require um, turn off at an earlier time. Uh, presumably, either some of these businesses are going to get grandfathered, or uh, and then be able to stay up, stay out, go on later. Or can we say to nine p.m. come back if you know there's change in store hours, or such earlier times as the city may impose with any changes? I mean, do we? One, no. Mm. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> I, because it would become it would become a pre-existing non-conforming um, situation, and so okay. it could continue that way. But if, um, and I just did a quick peek as well, all the stores in the Pioneer Valley close at eight. Um, so um, I, I think that you're probably pretty safe. And if they want, uh, um, and it, you know, want to go later, they can come back for a special permit request. And at that time, if the ordinance has changed, then they're under a special permit. So you could impose a condition that's reflective of the um, new, the new, ordinance. new ordinances. Yes. And, and if we said 830, it's not as, it's earlier than 9 p.m. Plus it gives time for employees to get back to their cars without the place going completely dark. Maybe 8.30 is a suggestion. That's fine, except I don't think it would be a problem either because it, I don't think those are the signs that are gonna be helping employees, employees get to their cars. Yeah. It's gonna be other I'm lighting open. in the in the, in the uh, parking lot. So I mean, I'm comfortable with eight. Okay. So um, do we think uh, we've heard enough? And I don't believe, Carolyn, there's still anyone from the public uh, in the waiting room. I guess I'll ask, is there anyone in the public? Raise your hand if you wanna address this. Uh, application right. answer is no right carolyn there's no one there right you're right. muted carolyn i think you're muted again carolyn <laughs> uh, you are right <laughs> thank you. and then um so i guess maybe in that case i'm gonna ask if we're ready motion. for a motion to close the public yep. hearing so moved second and we need a roll call vote because we're virtual please carolyn on the motion to close the public hearing elizabeth silver yes Karen Northrup? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Yes. And, and so the public hearing is closed on this application. And now, are we ready, given the discussion we've already had, for a motion on the request for the special permit? Sure. Um, I move that we uh, 
approve the permit with the condition that lighting um, be on no earlier than the start of business and be shut off by 8 p.m. Um, I would amend that this, this particular um, sign that we're talking about, not, not all of the site lighting, correct? I think this is the only one we can We dictate. can do, right. yeah. Okay. Very yeah. good. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion before we vote? I'm good. We at our discussion. So, okay. So, uh, I guess Carolyn, if, if we get a roll call vote on the, uh, um, uh, yep. on the Elizabeth Silver, yes. Sarah Northrup, yes. And David Bloomberg, yes. So that's unanimous. Thank you. Um, and our, I think we might be ready to go to the second and last item on the agenda. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Right. Good night. Um, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get back to the agenda. Um, that was uh, an appeal of a decision by the building commissioner regarding the structure at 129 Riverbank Road, Northampton, map ID 25-26. I believe I saw attorney McLaughlin in the virtual room. McLaughlin. Uh, I am here, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, I understand that there may be a request for a continuance. Is that where we are with this one? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I think I have some fairly good news and, and that is uh, after uh, considerable negotiations and various plans and ideas, we've got an agreement in principle from the new owner of 117 Riverbank uh, fortuitously since this last uh, deal fell apart last year with uh, other council, um, um, the property at 117 was sold to a new person and his lawyer, uh, attorney Sullivan and I have uh, worked out a deal in principle. We don't have the purchase and sale yet, but uh, it looks very good. Um, my client's paying a significant amount of money for a small strip of land, but uh, $75,000 for the, um, strip that you had talked about last year that was the subject of your last special permit. Uh, my client wasn't able to purchase it before from the prior owner, but this owner is, is working with us. Um, and when I appealed the, uh, the um, order of the building commissioner, I had all kinds of grounds in there that I was thinking of bringing, but I don't think we need to do that now. I think if, uh, if you give us some time, uh, we should be able to effectuate uh, the uh, special permit that was um, granted last year. Um, we're, we're trying to use the same uh, plan. And um, the, the thing that might take a little bit of time is the uh, current owner has a mortgage with one of these big electronic uh, banks. So we just want to make sure that they're not going to have a problem granting a, um, a partial release of the mortgage for the area shown in last year's uh, A&R plan. Right. Uh, once we know that they're not going to give grief about that, and with $75,000, there should be enough money to throw their way so that they'll give some kind of partial release, um, we should be able to do it. I just don't have a, um, you know, we just agreed on this um, the day before yesterday uh, is when we finally heard back. Um, and I have to say the, the neighbor did not want to sell this. Um, it took uh, a lot of uh, uh, discussions to get him to the point where he was willing. He's uh, he is getting a sizable amount of money, but um, he wasn't really willing to do this at first. Um, but we were able to come around and uh, get a resolution that looks good. And we've um, my clients hired Ward Smith, who's already uh, started to work on the uh, notice of intent for the Rivers Protection Act. Um, and I'm hoping, you know, to get these things in order and file a special permit uh, application, which will be extremely, extremely similar to last year. Um, and Mr. Smith will file the notice of intent. Um, and uh, this time, it's not a shimmera, it's real. We're, we're really doing this, uh, but I, I don't have it yet. Um, the, the, uh, I don't have control over my client's next door neighbor. And he just came about finally, just before, as the hearing was coming on, he finally broke down and agreed to do this. Um, so if you give us a 60 day extension, I'm hoping in that time to, um, we'll do a purchase and sale agreement. We'll um, start stuff with the, um, with the CONCOM and we will hopefully hear from the bank 
that holds the mortgage on the property such that I can file an application for special permit. And hopefully, um, you know, you would see fit to grant it again because it's I'm essentially doing the same thing over again. And that would make the um, appeal of the building inspector's dish, uh, decision regarding the removal of the property moot. And uh, so we're just asking for more time to try to effectuate what should have happened last year. And we apologize it didn't happen last year, but now I'm really have something that's, you know, going to happen. It's very right. different. Okay, good, thank you. Um, any- uh, Yeah, I have, a, I have a couple of I, questions. Um, it, it, it appears as though you've moved mountains, which is pretty remarkable. Um, when has your client paid the fines? We paid those right after the application, uh, uh, on the, right after the appeal. Okay. Once you came to me and told me the situation, I filed the appeal to the building inspector's order and we paid the fines. And um, I assume there will be absolutely no construction whatsoever in this interim? No, we have no, no intent to do anything until we have um, the special permit. And even then, he's still got to go to the building inspector. And I warned my client, I hope that he did the interior, <laughs> you know, uh, okay, because I'm sure the building inspector will look at the interior to make sure mm -hmm. that that's all right. And if he has to do something over, he'll have to. Um, okay, and in your motion, I thought you would ask to September 25th, not 60 days. Am I wrong? Did I misread um, that? If I did, okay. that was an error. We, we need I, I'm not sure. I, I could be. Yeah, I, I, I read I it yesterday. I really I think we'll, 60 days. Yeah, did I really you? think oh, okay. we'll right. 60 days, but my hope is that um, you will know because it's the same board, <laughs> so you will see how we're progressing. Uh, in regard to the application for special permit, so that hopefully there will be no need right. for determination on, you know, the right. commissioner's order pertaining to the teardown order. So I have one question for Carolyn. I was not on the uh, um, on the board for the original hearing. Was there an issue with the height as well as the setback? Um, there is a concern by the building department about the height, but it hasn't been confirmed yet. But all of that would be checked once it's shown that it, uh, a building permit could be issued for the property. Okay, it would have be to file separate... all of that. Right, okay. that's all completely separate. Okay, all right. I don't. I don't have any other questions. Yeah, and and uh, Sarah, did you have any questions? Um, I was. Uh just looking back at the various drawings and um, uh, so it wasn't clear to me which abutter you're talking about. Is it but I don't think we have to reopen this right now, a discussion on the merits. Um, it was a butter who had an adjacent property and on our last special permit, what we approved was if if the uh, applicant mm -hmm. obtained the strip of land from that abutter in accordance with the plan that was submitted to us then, and all we're being asked to do right now is a 60 day right. continuance. So they can essentially close that same purchase and put us mm -hmm. right back and, and frankly alleviate a, a situation with a very difficult history that I don't really think we want to go into right Correct. now. Correct, that's, that's, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. So um, does that mean um, October 20th, that would be the, um, or maybe it should be after the public potential public hearing on October 20th. So it would be Friday the 21st. Um, that was that yeah, that, that, that's, that, that sounds like um, October 21st. <laughs> yes, that sounds like something we can do. I mean, uh, I, I'll be honest with you, the, the other lawyers in my firm will do the, all the transactional stuff, but I've got them already working on it because I, I haven't done the closing in 30 years. So, but I do have uh, other lawyers in my firm starting to work with attorney Sullivan to try to get this done. So uh, that should be good. So that would kick our hearing to the 20th or, I, yeah, okay. Okay. Um, okay. So I guess I just, I, I suppose, Carolyn, we need a motion to grant the request for the continuance until October, whatever that date was. Yeah. Yes, okay. Carolyn. And um, could I say, yeah. could I say one more thing, Mr. Chair? In sure. my in my request for the continuance, I also set forth the waivers 
of the statutory yes, thank you. Yeah, 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 we saw that. There. Very that's important. in there in writing. Right. Taking into account the waivers that have been agreed to by the application in conjunction with the request for the continuance. Right. Um, and so it, it would be until uh, um, you would continue the hearing to October 20th, but they've asked for you know continuation for 60 days. I would just say that goes to the 21st, just so that it's the next day. You know, it's after the your meeting date, which would be the 20th, and then you'd have to say to a time certain. So if you want to do it right up well, at 5:30, that's fine too. Well, should we say that we're granting a continuance for 59 days? Does or to that? October 20th. Uh, you can just do two October 20th, and then we don't have to count up the days to be yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's been too hard with the calendar. <laughs> October 20th. Yeah, I assume that's okay, Counselor. Yes, thank you, okay. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. In, in this uh, this this process of uh, potentially allowing the extension, um, is there any more public hearing elements that we should be following procedurally? As in, uh, well, opening as in you. For other public comment, DPW comment, et cetera? You could do that now, or just because there's a request for continuation, you could put that all off till the next hearing, the 20th. And then, of course, you're, you're obligated not to talk about this item between now and the 20th outside of the public hearing. So that's the only um, requirement. I, I wouldn't think that you'd need to open it up for any comment now because of the whole con idea is to hold off on that mm -hmm. for the 20th. It's, it's you can hear all of that then. It, it's, it's, we're just right. ruling on a continuance. I don't want to have two hearings tonight and in October. Right. 20, I don't either. Especially don't after either. the last hearing. So, right. which Thank was you. quite grueling. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, can I, I make a motion to? Um, yes. Yeah, so I, I move that we approve. The motion for continuance until October 20th um, with that one minor At amendment 530? to the, yes. Uh, well, if we have other hearings, we should maybe put those first, but yeah, but yes, to the regular hearing date and time. A second. And a roll call, please. Um, Elizabeth Silver. Yes. Sarah Northrup. Yes. And David Bloomberg. Yes, thank you. So that's okay. unanimous, and the request for the continuance is approved. Thank you. I, I hope, I really hope it works out because it's such an unusual situation, and um, it would be a good outcome if we end up right where we we were hoping to be a year ago. That uh, to me, that would be a very good outcome. Uh, that's that's what I'm trying to do, and take care of the concom simultaneously. That's what yes. I'm trying to do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Yes. Um, thank you. Sure, and then I think we did. We wanted just to vote on the minutes that we have for. Uh, yes, uh, vote to approve. I July think it was 14th. July fourteenth. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, and Second. they look fine to me. There's a second, so just roll call in the minutes, please. Uh, Elizabeth Silver. Yes. Sarah Northrup. Yes. Uh, and David Bloomberg. Yes, thank you. That's unanimous. Um, so, any any other business uh, scheduling or otherwise before we just do you do you know about subsequent meetings, Carolyn? We do have a meeting, some hearings on the uh, September eighth, I believe. Oh, sorry, is that the date? Uh, yes, the eighth. That um, might be a, that might be an issue for me, but I can let you know. Okay. I, I'm not sure, okay. and then. Um, yeah. 22nd, do you know? I know it's pretty far out, but yeah, it's too early. Today. Okay. All right. Yeah. Very okay. good. Okay. All right. Motion Great. to adjourn. Second. Yes. Was there uh, anything else, Carolyn? Sorry. Before. Okay. Uh, mm -mm. okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. All right. Roll call. Elizabeth Silver. Yes. Sarah Northrop. Yes. And David Bloomberg. Yes, thank you. That's unanimous. Thank you, everybody. All right, All right thanks. Yeah.